Hoffman Show on the Team 980, always live as well on the free Odyssey app. We are streaming live on YouTube as well, youtube.com slash at the Team 980. And joining us now, the man who blew up our rundown, uh, which is fine. I will not hold it against him, especially because, well, he's joining us again and is so gracious with his time when he and his writing partner, Seth Wickersham, write these big bombshell stories for ESPN. It is Don Van Nada Jr. Don, welcome back to the show. Thank you. Thank you, Craig. Great to be with you today. So uh, there's a couple things that really stand out from this story to me. Uh, We spent the first segment of our show talking about it. Uh, The basic, uh, you know, tenant being that the Mary Jo White investigation is the biggest holdup remaining. And I thought it was very interesting the detail you and Seth were able to garner about that investigation because the team, I think, at times has pushed back and said like, oh, this isn't that big of a deal and and both to the Washington Post and to you guys they vehemently disagree with kind of your assessment of this Mary Jo White report so what can you tell us more about what is actually under investigation here and what kind of damage it could do to Dan Snyder well the investigation is actually quite sweeping it's quite broad Mary Jo White began the investigation 15 months ago in February of 2022, and she's investigating very specific allegations of sexual misconduct or sexual harassment involving Dan Snyder personally. The first one is a 2009 incident that allegedly occurred on Dan Snyder's plane. Former employee accused Snyder of groping her, asking her for sex, and trying to remove her clothes aboard his private plane. There was a settlement to this former team employee who made these allegations for $1.6 million. We reported for the first time last fall that Snyder was attempting to pay her an undisclosed sum again to keep her quiet so she would not speak to Mary Jo White and Mary Jo White's investigators. She steadfastly refused that offer, and she spoke to White and her team several times, we've reported today. There's a second allegation, the Tiffany Johnston allegation, She's the former commander's marketing manager and cheerleader. Uh, She alleges that she was uh, sexually harassed by Snyder personally as well. Uh, She said this, made these allegations back in February of 2022. Craig, you may remember Mm -hmm. that Snyder harassed her at a team dinner, put his hand on her thigh and pressed her toward the limousine. So those are the two sexual harassment slash misconduct allegations made directly against Snyder that Mary Jo White has been investigating. She has spoken to both of those women multiple times. She's also investigating financial improprieties, as we understand it. Uh, I don't know that much about it. I know there's you know, quite a few allegations that have made about it. We've reported on some of them, including that $55 million credit line. And so that's the scope of it. It's a broad scope. It affects Snyder personally. And our information from very good sources, league sources, including, by the way, a source close to Snyder's camp, is that this report that Mary Jo White we're told is very close to completing that Snyder and his lawyers are lobbying the NFL to limit the release of the findings by Mary Jo White. And this is the main remaining issue between Snyder uh, and, and, and the NFL in moving forward with the sale of the team. So I also just find it so interesting, Don, and I don't know how much you can say, because obviously you're not going to reveal uh, specific sources, but I just want to parse a little bit of language here. You know, the it's right at the top of the story that, you know, a commander spokesperson called ESPN's reporting for this story completely false and a blatant fabrication by someone with no actual knowledge of this matter. And then you spend the next however many paragraphs laying out your very intimate knowledge of the matter. But, I, you know, in so many things around this sale and around Dan, the longer it's gone on, the less the team specifically has pushed back. Yet the Washington Post report along similar lines in February, and then your report with new details today. Why do you think that the team, and I'm guessing this is someone from the team, not someone from Snyder's camp, because you you call them a commander spokesperson, is so vehemently pushing back against this very report? It's a good question. Uh, First of all, the statement that was given to us by a commander spokesperson says one person has it wrong. Uh, That's a mischaracterization of the facts that we brought to the team. We have multiple sources who are in a position to know that this is a remaining issue between Snyder and his lawyers and the NFL and what's going to happen specifically with the findings of Mary Jo White's report. So it's a mischaracterization on the part of the commander's 
spokesperson and saying we just have one person. There's multiple people. Uh, I want to say that at the top. Now, mm -hmm. why they're specifically pushing back so hard on this, I don't know. But my follow-up question for the commanders and for Snyder and his attorneys is a very simple one that we didn't get an answer to. Are you willing to say on the record that the full Mary Jo White report or all of the findings that Mary Jo White finds, the factual findings after a 15-month in-depth investigation can be made public? They have not answered that question. Uh, I don't know what their position on it is. All I know is they're pushing back very hard and vehemently, as you point out, Craig, on the assertion that this is a remaining issue that uh, is being batted back and forth between Snyder's lawyers and the NFL. Don Van Nata, ESPN, with us here on the Hoffman Show. So the other thing that I think is so interesting about kind of this process is uh, – Lisa Banks is also quoting your story, of course, the attorneys for the forty or the attorney for the forty former employees, and having talked to some of those employees, and you don't even have to talk to them. All you got to do is read their Twitter accounts. It was very clear that like Megan Ember, Melanie Coburn, they agreed to participate in the Mary Jo White investigation after the disappointment of Beth Wilkinson's report, uh, and no actual report coming out under the premise that this was going to be a full accounting, that there would be full findings and a full report produced. If the NFL were to try to placate Snyder here, are they exposing themselves to a lawsuit from Lisa Banks uh, under some kind of you know participation granted under false pretenses? I don't know what the legal terminology and what statutes could apply there, but is there any exposure as far as you know in talking to Lisa Banks for this story? Okay, I, I did not ask her that question, Craig. It's a, it's a good question. Um, just what I know about the law and having been a journalist now for 35 years, I, I think certainly that is potentially an option in, at play here. But I didn't ask Lisa Banks that specifically. But I do want to tell you and your listeners that Lisa Banks, when you know I spoke to her uh, last night and again this morning and presented her with the information that we have, you know, she's unequivocal in saying that if the findings that are released are the complete findings that are drafted by Mary Jo White and not the league, that's one thing, meaning it's okay. But if, as she puts it, if the league releases a, and these are her words, a truncated, watered down version of the findings that are drafted by the league, similar to what we saw back in July of 2021 with the NFL's press release that was put out about the Beth Wilkinson report, that of course we never saw, then as according to Lisa Banks, as she puts it, we have the big problem. So there is a lot of concern by Lisa Banks, who of course represents about 40 uh, former employees and, and uh, ex uh, team cheerleaders with how the league is going to handle the findings of Mary Jo White's report. It's my information for speaking to sources, Craig, I think we reflected in today's story, that the two women who make these allegations uh, against Snyder were assured during that investigation by Mary Jo White that her report, or at least the complete findings, are going to be released. So, again, this is an issue, I think, right now for the NFL, and uh, as we reported, uh, Snyder and his attorneys are pushing back and trying to limit as much as they can and persuade the NFL to limit uh, actually what comes out in this report. And, you know, it's been months. We've had Roger Goodell say, uh, you know, prior to the Super Bowl, I saw I was at his press conference in Phoenix and he said the findings right. of the rep of Harry Joe reports are, uh, report will be released. Um, and OK, the question then is how complete will those findings be? Right. And he keeps using findings. He doesn't say that there will necessarily be a full accounting, full report, kind of a summary versus a, a transcript, if you will. Um, so that'll be an interesting thing. But I, I do find it also interesting that Banks told you if there is at least a uh, kind of a findings from Mary Jo White, as opposed to one from Roger Goodell, that she would find that acceptable. Yeah, she's she, what what Lisa Banks told me is that she wants to hear directly from Mary Jo White that whatever findings are put out by the NFL of her report, that those are her findings, meaning Mary Jo White's findings, in full. She wants to have an assurance that comes from Mary Jo White that whatever the NFL ends up putting out uh, based on her investigation, her lengthy investigation of 15 months, is complete. Because according to Lisa Banks and, and anybody that looked at it, that was certainly lacking 
in what the NFL put out about the Beth Wilkinson investigation. No doubt. So in the, the story, it says Snyder's quote, only leverage is to threaten his fellow owners that he won't sell the team unless the white report is killed. An option this person said he quote, doesn't have, he isn't holding any cards and I don't see how the league doesn't release the report. So that leads us to this roadblock, or I guess explains how we're at this roadblock now where Dan still hasn't fully signed the agreement with Josh Harris. There's a bunch of stuff that obviously has to be worked out. What kind of timeline are we looking at and how realistic is it that this stuff can get worked out? Because it doesn't seem like anyone's really saying like, oh, no, this isn't going to happen. It's just this is going to be painful and complicated. So how do we how do we get through the pain and the complications? And that 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 I would only be able to speculate about everything involving Dan Snyder has been painful and complicated. <laughs> You're um, telling so, me, Don, <laughs> right, but you know, better than anything, right. And, and so, you know, I mean, I, I actually don't know how we're going to get to the end here. I don't know how dug in Snyder and his attorneys are on this. Uh, I know from the sources that I've spoken with and my colleague Seth Wickersham have talked with, um, that this is certainly a, an impasse and a roadblock to getting to the end. Now, you know, how Snyder, whether he will accept something less than what he's pushing for now, at the end of the day, I really don't know. I can only speculate about it. But as our source, you just read that quote, said, you know, he doesn't have that much leverage. I mean, my understanding, the leverage that he has is simply just time. You know, the way it's been put to me and put to Seth is that basically the, there are people around the league now, including people in the league office, that want him gone. He's not gone. Now, there are issues potentially we've heard uh, about uh, the financing, um, but our reporting shows that this is a major roadblock right now. And again, where's Mary Jo White's report? We have somebody um, who is uh, in a position to know saying she's all but done with her work. In the last four to six weeks, she did a final round of uh, interviews with some of the key witnesses. And so you know, basically now the question is for the NFL, um, Where's the report or where are the findings and if the, it, it, and why is there a holdup? And I think that Seth and I went a long way today explaining what the holdup is based on. Don Van Nata, Jr., ESPN, with us. Of course, award-winning journalist has written so much about these stories over the last couple of years. And, and Don, one thing that I think has also been consistent, specifically when you and Seth have reported things, is there's there tends to be stuff that happens right after like we get announcements like there's a report it kind of things build up there there's a loudness that happens right before there is news uh, more people start talking and that thus you guys get to a reportable threshold I understand that's how that works uh, being a journalist or at least playing one on the radio occasionally myself um, so like do you think that you know, in the next couple of weeks, we could see the Mary Jo White report. Is this, you know, people putting pressure on Dan to break through some of these thresholds? Or is this just people fed up and, and we actually, maybe this isn't noise before something gigantic happens and it, it is just a pure expression of frustration? Well, I think it's, I think it's a couple of things going on. And that's, and that's an excellent question. There, there clearly is frustration with the pace of this and people around the league at the owner's level, at the executive's level, people on Park Avenue and the league office are frustrated at the pace. This has been an extremely slow process when you compare it to the Broncos sale and other team sales. Uh, it, it's complicated for a lot of the obvious reasons that we know about, but there is frustration. Uh, and certainly there's frustration with the fact that as we've reported Snyder and his attorneys, you know, want a say in precisely what is released by the NFL on what Mary Jo White finds. But there's also a sort of unofficial deadline here. You know, we're just less than two weeks away from the next owners meeting. The spring owners meetings begin on May 22nd in Minneapolis. And I think that was always the target date for the sale to be tentatively approved. And uh, from what we're hearing, they may not make it. Now, they still might. They still might. We're 10 days away. But, uh, but they may not make that, and I think that's also a little bit of what's driving some of the frustration and some of the things uh, that uh, Seth and I picked up this week on this story. Um, off the Snyder beat for just a moment, but related, because obviously they can, they can put a lot more pressure when the Harris group has all their I's dotted and T's crossed. I'm sure you also uh, have been talking to people uh, in the background about that side of this. What can you tell us about where the Harris group is and their ability to plug some of the holes in the financing? And they've got so much money in terms of you know hum human beings involved as net worth 
But how do they they plug those financial holes and get their side shirt up so they can hopefully, you know, if, if need be, ramp up the pressure on Snyder? Yeah, my understanding is that the financial issues are not as great as has been reported by some folks, that clearly there is a concern that there are so many limited partners uh, to get to the cash threshold that is needed uh, with the Harris Group. So obviously due diligence needs to be done on where's that cash coming from and things like that. And my understanding, the Finance Committee meeting this week, that was some of what was discussed and the Washington Post reflected that. Uh, in their reporting over the last 36 hours or so. But again, Craig, my understanding is that is less of a concern. There's still due diligence that needs to be done. Um, but as we reported, we had somebody uh, in a position to know that told us unequivocally in our story today that the last remaining major roadblock is this issue of what's going to happen with Mary Jo White's report. I believe the indemnification piece of that is also part of it. Um, but it is... Uh, it, it is precisely what's going to happen with the report and those findings as we record today on ESPN.com. So I'll wrap up with this, Don. And this is, I feel like I might have asked you this before, um, but I just keep landing in the same place with this story, which is if they had just taken care of this years ago, AKA when the first reporting came out from the New York Times and the Washington Post about all the things that happened and there were subsequent investigations. And even if you want to say at the point that the Wilkinson report comes out um, or the Wilkinson report is presented to the commissioner, if they had said, this is untenable, this is completely against everything we stand for, this is a liability, whatever their reasoning is, to throw Dan Snyder out of the league then and just grow up and vote him out. They're not here right now. We're still not talking about this in May of 2023. As you talk, one, is that a reasonable opinion to have? Uh, and two, as you've talked to folks around the league, specifically other owners, is there any regret that they didn't push harder years ago so that this could have been done and over with possibly by a year or two by now? Oh, well, well, well first of all, there's no doubt that there could have been a much stronger response by the league in the summer of 2021 when Beth Wilkinson's investigation was completed than what we saw. Um, you know, Snyder was suspended in air quotes for an indefinite amount of time. His lawyer, John Brownlee, has on the record saying that Snyder, that that suspension actually was lifted as early as November of that fall. So if, if you take Brownlee at his word, Snyder was only suspended for four months for some very serious findings by Beth Wilkinson, none of which we saw. You know, there's been some reports, as you know, Craig, that suggested Beth Wilkinson actually recommended to the league that Snyder be forced to sell the team. Mm -hmm. So as we know, that didn't happen, right? And and this has gotten worse. I reported earlier this year, you and I talked about it on your show, that federal prosecutors in Virginia are investigating financial improprieties by the team, including a secret $55 million loan that Snyder's limited partners claim he took out that they didn't know about. That's still uh, happening. That investigation is ongoing, as I understand it. So... Uh, there's a lot here. Uh, whether there's regret, uh, of course there is. There's, there's people around the league that don't like Dan Snyder. We reflected that in our report last October, our in-depth report about Snyder telling people he had dug up dirt on uh, owners, fellow owners, as well as the commissioner. And, um, you know, you can go back, anybody can go back and read some of the quotes that were in that story. I mean, he doesn't have a lot, he didn't have that many friends in the league back then. So there is some regret there, uh, among owners that uh, this has been allowed to play out in a way that has been embarrassing to the league uh, and, uh, and the owners, and, and they want it done with, as I said earlier in, in our conversation. They've had it. They want it over with. And, you know, the question is, what's left? And one of the major things as we report that's left is Mary Jo White's report and her findings and what happens with them. Yeah, it just it seems as if he's got no friends and allies left, that they should do what they want, and if he doesn't do what they want in response to that, they should just vote him out. But I, I guess they don't want to do that. Like, that, that's the thing I don't get. Do they not realize they have all of the leverage? Yeah, that's a, that's a really good uh, point, and it's one of the things, you know, in, in my conversations with sources this week, as, as well as with uh, Seth's uh, conversations with his sources, a lot of it's about leverage. And, you know, I kept pressing people, What's his leverage here? I, you know, I was asking it again earlier this morning uh, of a couple of sources. One source said, well, timing. And, and it's like, well, what do you mean timing? Well, he can drag his feet. This can drag into the summer or even into the fall. 
Um, if he doesn't like what the league is saying on the Mary Jo White report, the indemnification issue and other issues. So it, it can be made very painful for the league on the way out. And so I guess that's leverage, but it doesn't sound like it's much because, as you say, there's always an option for the owners to take a vote. But it, it's, a, it's kind of the bridge too far for them because if they do it, it's unprecedented. It's never been done before in the history of the NFL. Then they possibly can be worrying, well, maybe this could happen to us if we ever step out of bounds. My response always to that would be good. Uh, because if you misbehave, then the actions, consequences, handshake emoji right there. But then again, I'm not the owner. So uh, I get why they think that way, at least selfishly. Uh, Don Van Nata, fantastic work as always. Thank you so much for your time here on the show. And I'm sure we'll be talking again here over the next uh, month and a half or so, hopefully with, with this thing wrapping up. Look forward to that, Craig. Thanks so much. Enjoy your weekend.